Hello everyone. According to the calculations of scientists, the main deficit of the 21st century will not be oil or some mineral, but simple fresh water. According to the UN, about 70% of water is spent on irrigation, especially during droughts. Humankind is inventing more and more new methods to solve this problem, and some of them are so amazing that they can even be called strange. Do you want to see how droughts are being fought around the world? Then let's get it on. Excuse me. How's it going? Ah, so. Shadow balls. At first sight, it seems that some millionaire, big fan of ball pools, wanted to play, and so he created this. But this is actually just a very unusual way to save water in the reservoirs of Los Angeles during a drought. Ninety-six million light plastic balls were placed on the artificial reservoir with a volume of 12.5 billion litres, covering the surface of the water with a protective layer. The balls created a shadow that prevented the water from heating up, avoiding evaporation, and at the same time preventing the contamination of the reservoir with all sorts of trash. California paid 36 cents for each ball, and the total price was significantly less than the cost of all other projects to combat drought. Experts expect that it'll be possible to reduce the evaporation by approximately 1.1 billion litres per year, enough to supply more than 8,000 people in the state with drinking water. The idea to cover the reservoir with a layer of balls came to the mind of biologist Brian White. By the way, the black colour was chosen not by chance, and not at all because it's cool or stylish. This was made to protect the balls from the destructive effect of ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Artificial clouds Droughts are caused by the absence of rain, so how can you make it rain? Of course, by creating clouds. In the history of humankind, scammers and magicians made others believe they had powers to make it rain, and they performed magical rites to stop the drought with rain. But is it possible to do? Create a rain cloud from almost nothing? Well, turns out it is possible. In April of this year, a viral video appeared on the internet, where the well-known presenter Jeremy Clarkson stands next to a device with steam coming out, rising and spilling raindrops onto the ground. And as it turns out, the cleanest. And oxygen, it's water vapour. And in about an hour's time, someone in Mississippi is going to get wet washing. It will actually rain. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Oh, NASA's playing God. It's making its own weather. A real miracle from NASA. At last, NASA's dealing with real issues and not searching space, you might think. However, in fact, NASA has not yet learned to change the weather. The video shows a powerful engine for the American Super Heavy Carrier Rocket Space Launch System. Exactly the same steam can be seen on the takeoff of the rocket, but it never occurred to anyone that somebody would create clouds this way. But wait, don't worry. These engines can really cause rain, because after the test, the steam rises to the top, it cools down and turns into water, but it wouldn't be possible to call this device a fully-fledged device for creating clouds. Water desalination Probably many people are wondering, if there is a huge amount of salt water on our planet, why don't we make it fresh and then use it? I don't know. Well, little did you know that this method already exists. This method, along with others, is used in California to fight droughts. Here in the city of San Diego is the largest desalination plant in the country, which desalts water from the Pacific and supplies 185 million litres of drinking water daily to the region. Unlike other bodies of water located on the territory of California, the ocean doesn't change depending on the amount of precipitation that has fallen during the winter, and therefore is more reliable. But this is a very, very expensive project. The plant's maintenance alone is estimated at 500 million million dollars, and its designing cost was 150 million. Another problem with desalination is ecology. You need two litres of ocean water to produce one litre of fresh water, and together with these two litres, millions of ocean organisms enter the water intake pipes. 
After treatment, the excess liquid, saturated with salt and sometimes contaminated with additional substances, returns back to the ocean. And this, of course, is terrible for the environment. Before I reveal the most amazing example, I'd like to remind you to subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. We upload amazing fact-filled list videos daily. Also, make sure to click that bell icon to stay updated or you'll regret on missing out on some amazing knowledge that could have filled your brain. Green Belt one of the problems related to drought is deserts getting bigger. So, for example, the Chinese desert of Tenga, the fourth largest in this country by area, is gradually expanding. And this seriously worries environmentalists. There are several freshwater lakes in this territory, which partially restrain the desertification of the territory. But this is clearly not enough. And every year, the area covered by sand only increases. To stop this frightening process, they use low-maintenance plants that can survive in dry and hot conditions. But before you put them in the desert, the soil must be prepared. By the way, China has been taming the sands for decades and has made significant progress. The fact is that deserts cover about a quarter of the country, and most of them appeared as a result of the agricultural mistakes of our ancestors. Of course, they didn't worry about ecology and other things, and therefore we, their descendants, have to correct their mistakes. One of the strategies that local leaders have developed for the stabilization of the soil at the edge of the desert is using a network of straw cells. So it's basically a straw grid that keeps the sand from expanding. Not perfect, of course, but it's still better than nothing, right? Then, several hardy types of grass are planted, which in turn makes it possible to plant larger plants. And this scheme really works. The fruit trees around the Shapotu area are the result of the restoration of land from the desert in 1950. Cloud Seeding the technology of seeding clouds can't be called a breakthrough per se, but in the UAE, it was taken to a new level and continues to be applied to this day. Whatever you say, the Emirates are considered one of the most arid regions in the world. Every year, there are about 120 millimeters of precipitation. Farming or just living in such conditions is quite difficult, and therefore the local authorities take everything they can from rain clouds, so to speak. In the early 2000s, the UAE began to use cloud seeding on a regular basis. Yes, according to the weather forecasters, such actions don't always guarantee precipitation. Besides, they're not suitable for all types of clouds. But in most cases, the results are very successful. The clouds are sprinkled with a special mixture of potassium chloride and magnesium, which turn the steam into liquid. Annually, this costs more than half a million dollars. And in 2015 alone, 186 flights were made. Frankly, it's not a cheap pleasure, but cloud seeding is cheaper for the country than creating seawater desalination plants. By the way, in the near future, this technology is going to be improved with the help of drones. This should significantly reduce the costs, as well as favorably affect the environment. The air vehicles will emit electric charges into the clouds, which has no negative impact on the environment. Solid Rain the technology proposed by Mexican engineer Sergio Velasco is a breakthrough in the field of combating drought. It's quite simple as well. The field must be seeded with a special sorbent, polymer granules, and abundantly watered. Well, and that's all. Humans are no longer required because the granules do everything themselves. They swell because of the water, and one kilogram of sorbent can hold up to 500 liters of water. And after irrigation begins to work as an unusual independent reservoir that maintains the soil moisturized. When it falls below a certain threshold, the granules will give up the water, and when it rains, they'll swell again, absorbing the water. And such cycles can be repeated many times, because the magic component is not washed out of the soil and can successfully work from 5 to 10 years, depending on the situation and type of plant. It's brilliant, right? In addition, the new method of irrigation requires less water than any other. It improves yield, eliminates the problem of droughts, and moreover, is environmentally friendly. A real Mexican miracle. Drip Irrigation Israel is also quite an arid country, and therefore they try to use fresh water with intelligence, especially in hot weather, which threatens plants. So they use a technology known as drip irrigation. 
a simple but ingenious system that allows to obtain the maximum result with a minimum amount of water. Through special tubes, water is delivered in small portions directly to the root zone of the plants. So that every plant gets exactly the amount of liquid that is needed, the leaves remain dry, preventing any unpleasant diseases like fungus. Saving water, fertilizer, labor costs, and energy are some of the advantages of this unique method. With the help of drip irrigation, you can create a green lawn in a dry, almost lifeless land, and even avoid the appearance of weeds. All this is the responsibility of the Netafim company, and it's not surprising that today this company, which was once the first to use the technology of drip irrigation, has become a world leader in this field. Reusing water Another cool Israeli technology is the reuse of liquid. After all, if we recycle all waste and reuse it, why not do the same with water? For real. For many years now, Israel has built reservoirs to collect rainwater and treated sewage waters and using it for irrigation. Agriculture consumes more than half of the water in Israel, and thanks to the use of the reused water, the amount of potable water used in agriculture has fallen by as much as 60%. Just imagine. 3% of treated wastewater is reused for irrigation, about 30% of the total water consumed by agriculture, and 17% of total water consumption in Israel. And experts are planning to increase this number. They are also going to send purified water to contaminated rivers, and thus give them a second life. The third report of the United Nations on the state of the world's water resources notes that Israel occupies a leading place in the world on the use of purified circulating water for agriculture. So, they are setting an example.